This was one of the busiest off-seasons we've seen in recent memory when it comes to the coaching carousel. Nearly one-fifth of FBS programs hired a brand new coach. Some stood out more than others, and I'm sure there are some that flew under the radar that'll turn out to be really good hires. Today, I'll be going over the 10 most notable coaching hires from the off-season. Before we get to today's video, make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you're watching this video, odds are that you love college football, and odds are you aren't subscribed to my channel. So make sure to subscribe to one of the best college football communities here on YouTube. I'm posting college football videos all off season, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Also, make sure to drop a like on this video as well. It helps out with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. Probably the most talked about hire of the offseason was Deion Sanders being named the new head coach at Colorado. It was a pretty shocking move considering Colorado was one of the worst teams at the FBS level last season as they finished the year 1-11. They've also been one of the worst Power 5 teams since they joined the Pac-12 over a decade ago. Sanders has been the head coach at Jackson State since 2020 where he's gone 27-5 and, and was named the SWAC coach of the year the last two seasons. It's been a pretty eventful offseason already for Colorado as they've made some pretty big splashes. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how this experiment plays itself out. As an Arizona State fan, I gotta talk about this one because I think it's one of the more underrated hires of the entire offseason. The Sun Devils hired Kenny Dillingham who was Oregon's offensive coordinator last season. Dillingham is a 2012 graduate of Arizona State and a native of Arizona. He's a former high school coach in the state and started his college career at Arizona State as an offensive assistant back in 2014. At the young age of 32, he'll be the youngest head coach at the Power 5 level. He's already done a fantastic job in his first few months and I really think he's the right guy to help get ASU back on track. At least, I sure hope so. After being in the news the last few years as a potential hire at a bigger program, Luke Fickle finally got that promotion, and he's the new head coach at Wisconsin. He had quite the successful career with Cincinnati, as he led them to the college football playoff in 2021 and went 57 and 18 in his six seasons there. Fickle has been pretty picky about jobs over the years as Cincinnati rose to the top of the group of five level, and many people, myself included, always wondered what opportunity it would take to lure him away from Cincinnati. Well, it turns out it was this one. After a successful tenure with Purdue, Jeff Brown returned to his alma mater and was named Louisville's head coach. Brown was at Purdue for six seasons and guided them to the Big Ten Championship this past year. Brown actually turned down the Louisville job back in 2018, opting to stay with Purdue. He had quite the career while at Louisville as he threw for over 5,400 yards with 38 passing touchdowns. In 2006, he was inducted into the Louisville Ring of Honor. Now, he returns home and has a chance to turn this program around. A move that I found really interesting was Jamie Chadwell being hired at Liberty. I thought what he did at Coastal Carolina was incredible and that he'd ride it out there until a better job came along. And I'm actually pretty shocked it was Liberty. I get that they're joining Conference USA next season, so maybe that's that. Maybe the pay was also significantly better and he viewed it as a better stepping stone for his next gig. While as the head coach for Coastal Carolina, he went 39-22 and in 5 seasons, but more impressively went 31-6 and over his last 3 seasons, emerging as one of the top coaches in the entire country. It'll be interesting to see if he's able to carry all of that momentum over to Liberty. After the Scott Frost era ended in disaster, Nebraska made a pretty solid hire in bringing in former Baylor head coach Matt Rule. He returns to the college ranks after a pretty disastrous NFL stint that saw him get fired by the Panthers. Rural has a pretty strong reputation for turning programs around, and what better place to do that at than Nebraska, who desperately need a turnaround very quickly. In his third season at Temple, the Owls went 10-2 in the regular season. A year later, he led the program to their first conference championship since 1967. At Baylor, just two years after going 1-11 in his first season, he led the Bears to an 11-3 record in 2020. I think this was a great hire for Nebraska, and I think he's the guy that can have them compete for conference championships once again. We talked about Liberty hiring a new coach earlier, well that's because the old one left as Hugh Freeze took the Auburn job. Freeze had spent the past four seasons with Liberty where he turned the Flames into one of the high-rising teams at the FBS level. 
This will be Freeze's second head coaching stint in the SEC as he was the Ole Miss head coach from 2012 through 2016. But we won't talk about how that tenure ended. He's proven that he's one of the top offensive minded coaches in the game, so we'll see what he brings to Auburn. For the Tigers, this will be their third head coach in four seasons, so they kinda need this move to work out for them. Remember Tom Herman? Well, he's back as Florida Atlantic's new head coach. He replaces a name you're likely familiar with as well in Willie Taggart. Herman has had a pretty successful collegiate career as he's gone 54 and 22 while at Houston and Texas. His best season came in Austin back in 2018 when the Longhorns went 10 and 4, finished second in the Big 12, and beat Georgia in the Sugar Bowl. I think Herman's actually going to do a really solid job at FAU, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see him back at the Power 5 level very soon. We mentioned Purdue earlier, but they hired a new coach in former Illinois defensive coordinator Ryan Walters. He spent the past two seasons at Illinois and was a finalist for the Broyles Award this past season, which goes to the nation's top assistant coach. Illinois' defense rose to number one in several key statistical categories this past year, and they finished the regular season first in fewest points allowed and second in fewest yards allowed. We'll wrap up today's video with a school you're likely not expecting to be on this list in Texas State. They hired former Incarnate Word head coach G.J. Kinney. He began his coaching career in 2017 when he was a graduate assistant at SMU. Over the next four years, he was an offensive analyst for Arkansas, an offensive special projects coach for the Eagles, Hawaii's offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach, and UCF's co-offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. This past season, Incarnate Word was the FCS's national leader in scoring as they scored more than 53 points a game and led the country in yards at just under 600. The Cardinals defense also allowed the fewest points per game and the second fewest total yards per game. Again, I get it's Texas State, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's a riser and is able to reach the Power 5 level shortly. Well, those are my 10 favorite coaching hires from the offseason. Which coaching hire do you think was the best? Also, was there a coaching hire I didn't include that should have been on this list? Let me know in the comment section down below. Before you leave, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you love college football, then this is definitely the place for you. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm posting videos all off season, so make sure to subscribe if you call yourself a college football fan. Also, don't forget to drop a like on this video as well, as it helps out with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.